Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Saturday, July the 7th, 2018. Let's take a look at what's happening out there. First of all, tropical depression number three in the western Atlantic here off the coast of North Carolina. Not going to be a major problem outside of the rip current threat. And this is what I was highlighting yesterday. We're going to look at that in more detail in just a moment. The forecast track shows this moving away from the United States and out towards generally the vicinity of offshore of Nova Scotia and maybe impacting southeast Newfoundland as a much different type of system, uh, post-tropical, maybe bringing some rain and some gusty winds, but it'll be a different structural system by the time it reaches this area uh, due to the colder water that resides in that area pretty much all year long. Um, if we look at the satellite picture of it right here, getting definitely better organized, recon out here investigating, finding some evidence of tropical storm force winds over in the southwest quad. Uh, overall, the pressures are still high, you know, 10, 15, 10, 16 millibars, so the pressures have not come down much. But the overall structure definitely improving, and it's on its way to becoming tropical storm. Chris, maybe in the next few hours, you can notice, too, some of the bands that are trying to rotate through here and feed the system uh, are intersecting and interacting with the coastal areas and even moving inland just a little bit. So if you're you know, wanting to go out in the boat along the Pamlico Sound, maybe a little choppy out here, windy with northeast winds. And then in your nearshore waters, just be careful. Some of these bands producing some showers and thunderstorms, maybe an isolated water spout out of this, you just never know. But the main issue that I really want to promote with this is the threat of rip currents all along the coastal areas, obviously. And that is a major hazard. Yesterday, my wife took the kids to the beach at Wrightsville Beach, and she said she had to wait 45 minutes to get a parking place, showing me how busy it was. A lot of people hitting the coastal areas this weekend, and a lot of those people come from far inland locations, you know, Ohio, the D.C. metro area, etc., inland North Carolina, all the way from the mountains, of course, coming to the coast, and you may be all excited, and you know, it's wonderful. You're finally going to get to go down to the beach. But then you see, oh, what do those red flags mean or yellow flags or whatever? You've got to be mindful of these rip currents. And we can see that very prominently displayed here on the National Weather Service page. I mean, there are rip current statements, a beach hazard statement. You guys need to read these and know the risk uh, from rip currents in the area that you are visiting higher than normal surf, rougher surf conditions, and small craft advisories. This is a hazard, okay? Again, people ignoring these systems because they are not named storms or a certain category of hurricane. I'm going to hammer this you know, permanently now that we have to look at all the different hazards. You know, you would never, ever say, oh, well, that's just a two-foot rattlesnake. I think I'll play with it. He's only two feet long or or whatever. He's not one of those six-foot giant timber rattlers that we see pictures of on social media where a guy picks it up after he killed it or whatever. And yeah, yeah you've seen those giant snakes. No way. You would leave a two-foot rattlesnake, a one-foot rattlesnake, an eight-inch rattlesnake. At least I would. I wouldn't kill it. That's a story for another day, but I certainly wouldn't mess with it, right? And honestly, that analogy works here. You can't look at a tropical system and say, oh, well, it's not a six-foot rattlesnake, i.e. a Category 3 hurricane, so I'm not going to worry about it. You do have, I mean, look at that, beach hazards statement, rip current statements yesterday at Wrightsville Beach, many, many rescues and uh, efforts to get people out of the water, all successful, thank goodness, but it is a problem, so please bear that in mind. Not trying to scare you away from the beach. I want to make sure you come home from the beach uh, and not have a funeral planned for you or a loved one a few days from now. Honestly, this is very, very serious and part of what we talk about here, not just, you know, oh, there's hurricanes coming or not, and then leave it at that. Uh, they all have their hazards, okay? So barrel, speaking of hazards, the next few days diminishing as it moves through the Caribbean, it looks like, and the degeneration process has begun. Uh, that being said, there's still tropical storm Warnings in effect here for portions of the Lesser Antilles, but the overall threat appears to be diminishing now, and we can see the reason why 
in this satellite loop. In fact, both of these loops coming from Tropical Tidbits, a great website, Levi adding the satellite parameters here uh, over the last few weeks, and it's really amazing, especially taking advantage of the GOES-16 uh, products, the high-resolution stuff. So let me get this working properly and zoom down a little bit, or pan down. So scroll down, whatever. There's the exposed center. And why is it doing that? Part of it is uh, shear in the atmosphere. Uh, the system is now finally moving faster. You remember how I've been remarking on the fairly steady, not slow movement, but I was remarking on the fact that it was not moving at 20 or 25 miles per hour. Well, now it's picking up some speed, so it's leaving its thunderstorms behind. And all of this is a sign that it is weakening it's just a low-level cloud swirl, uh, probably some gusty winds in there from time to time, a few heavier showers, and all of this will be advancing towards the eastern Caribbean islands, but in a much reduced fashion from what we saw yesterday. And I want to point out, this was absolutely part of the overall package from the National Hurricane Center's discussions, you know, mentioning that the small size of barrel would lead to much higher than normal forecast intensity issues, so to speak. And I'm paraphrasing there, but when you have these small systems, they can fluctuate in intensity very, very quickly. As we saw on the remarkable upturn in its health the other day, and then now it's rapidly starting to fall apart. And this is not a surprise, okay? This is part of the overall idea when you're dealing with a very small system such as barrel. And... You know, as far as regeneration later on, uh, once it gets through this area, maybe up through here, maybe, but I highly doubt it. Uh, and I've seen a few people saying, well, maybe it'll get into the Gulf and do like Harvey. I highly doubt it. And, I mean, honestly, I would tell you if I thought there was a chance that it could do that. And so I would say, you know, the, the easy way out, the politically correct way of saying it, there's a non-zero chance that it could end up in the Gulf. And there's a non-zero chance that it could regenerate in the southwest Atlantic and do something. But more than likely, because of its small overall envelope of energy down here, and it is very small, it just isn't going to have the oomph to survive, okay? So I wouldn't worry about it at all. And if it comes back later, we'll be on top of it. But I highly doubt it's going to do that, to be honest with you. So just a few other things here related to what's happening uh, along the coast of North Carolina. This is the front right here, showers and thunderstorms associated with the cold front, the trough coming in. In the coastal areas, this is your rain shield, and then more so offshore with developing soon-to-be tropical storm Chris. So just keep that in mind. Looking at the track forecast here, this is neat. You hear these often referred to as the spaghetti plot, but this looks more like a jellyfish plot and uh, a jellyfish that's moving in this direction. Wouldn't you agree? It kind of looks like a jellyfish. Like here are some of the tentacles that come out. This would be the head, and then more tentacles coming down the middle. A jellyfish plot. I thought that was kind of cool. But you notice, for the most part, outside of, I guess, the old climatology and persistence or whatever, and these are your replacements. Remember, we used to have the BAMS models, the beta and advection models. And you had the shallow, medium, and deep. Uh, I guess these replace those. I haven't really researched what these newer replacements are because they're just not as sophisticated as the more robust uh, global models, the three-dimensional dynamical models, etc. But nevertheless, the core of the model suite right here, clearly taking this towards Newfoundland. And again, you folks up here, don't worry too much about it. You know, heavy rain as this pass, passes through, but not much of an issue since water temperatures are still so very cold. Uh, but it could be heading your way, so get ready for some potential heavy rainfall. And we see for TD3 here, the general idea is strengthening over time, and then it drops off as it reaches those colder waters. Probably becomes a hurricane at some point. Wouldn't surprise me, especially considering how warm the water temperatures are off the East Coast. And then here is sort of your bifurcation of tracks, a not very agreeable, uh, in the first part it is, you know, pretty tight, but then you get this divergence here, this bifurcation 
a fancy way of saying split tracks, I guess. Uh, but again, there may be nothing left of this energy packet by the time it reaches this area. So I wouldn't put too much worry into anything past about three days at all. And we can see that here in the intensity guidance. And when this is split, it really tells me, okay, pay attention to the dynamic models, especially here. And they are down, down, down with their trends. Uh, yeah, the H dwarf tries to come back later, but it has issues from time to time at overdoing things. Barrel, I believe, will be more of a novelty and, whoo, that was close kind of thing uh, for the Lesser Antilles, and that's about it. So not too much to worry about. And here's a big reason why this is the upper level. <clears throat> GFS, come on, throat pattern. It's the Saturday afternoon uh, congestion, whatever. And you can see sharp trough right here, strong upper level winds, just a whole mishmash of nothing, you know, in terms of favorability. Too much going on, high traffic pattern, because the Atlantic Basin is not in a widespread upward motion pattern where you have 200 millibar winds, which is what this chart shows, that are favorable. No deep easterlies coming through here to speak of. It's just not favorable, period. So I wouldn't worry about uh, barrel regenerating at all. Non-zero chance. You never say never, but you get the idea. <clears throat> all right, looking at uh, the West Pacific, Typhoon Maria. And I talked about this yesterday. When you say, Maria, what in the world? Didn't they retire that? Each basin has its own list of names. And the representative nations around that basin work with the local weather offices uh, and the UN's WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, and they choose all this well ahead of time. And Maria just happened to be on this year's list of names for Westpac typhoon activity. And that's the way it is. Should they have removed it, you know, preemptively? Eh, I don't know. I mean, it's in the Western Pacific, and so that's that. I just wanted to explain it. So here's the track, and, you know, just not wanting to ignore what's happening out here. Maybe some impacts to Taiwan. Seeing some indications in some of the chatter on social media that the track may shift a little bit more south, presenting a direct impact probability increasing for Taipei, for example. So we'll see how this evolves over the next few days. Uh, it's typhoon season and the Madden-Julian oscillation favoring this part of the world, so this is no surprise. All right, so that's it. We're all caught up. No big worries. I think we're going to get off relatively lucky from what we were looking at just 24 hours ago. Um, even Chris, to be, you know, there was a time there where it looked like it might impact the Carolina coast directly and fairly significantly, but outside of that rip current threat and the rough surf, which again is a problem, so don't dismiss that, but I think we're going to do pretty good considering it's going to move away and be intensifying as it does so. And then of course the degeneration process of barrel. Great news for the Eastern Caribbean islands and uh, all good news from here, I guess. All right, well, that's it from me for today. Have a great rest of your Saturday. And just one more time, if you're heading down to the beach along the Carolinas, uh, you know, southeast Virginia, everywhere, any rip current threat problems, please take that seriously. Let's get zero deaths out of this, okay? Last year, Gert killed two people, and it was hundreds of miles offshore. So we have to be careful. All right, I'm done being the protective dad. Uh, have a great Saturday. I am Mark Suddeth. I'm never done being a protective dad, but you get the idea. HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk with you more tomorrow.